All right. I am very excited uh, to have Wade Sutton here. I had the privilege of being interviewed by you the other day and watch, and read the interview. And it was it was very well done. And it was it was written creatively. It wasn't the typical, you know, and I don't I'm not putting anybody down, but it just wasn't the typical same. You know, Rick did this. So and so did this, blah, blah, blah. It was very informative, had a lot of practical applications and things that you could do. We just weren't reading an article. It's almost like we were be being given a tutorial and a guide on how to go do something. So, Wade, thanks for uh, letting me record this and share with the Blueprint members. But tell me a little bit about you and a little bit about your company. Uh, my name is Wade Sutton. I live in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour north of Pittsburgh. And I spent almost 20 years working as a radio journalist for three radio stations. I was the news director and the morning news anchor. Uh, I'm out of that now, and I have a company called Rocket to the Stars. And it's a, a really diverse company. We do a lot of things. We do uh, live performance training. We do marketing and media consultations. We do writing for websites. We do a lot of stuff with writing web content. Uh, biographies, I mean, really anything for a website. We can help you put together a press kit. Uh, we also do a series of development articles that we just started in the middle of December, and that was one of the ones I interviewed you for. Okay. Uh, we also do artist interviews, which we just started three weeks ago. Yep, and I read the one with the Springs, are, who are also yes. Blueprint members. Yes, and we're getting an outstanding reaction uh, from those interviews because they're very, very in-depth, uh, but they're also designed in a way for somebody to come to, you know, to come to the page, read about the artist, learn a lot about the artist, stuff that they're not hearing anyplace else, and check out their videos, hear their music, find out how to buy their music. Everything is self-contained. So not only is it really good for the fans to learn about the artist, it's also a great marketing tool for the now, artist. Now, I noticed that stuff. you're not interviewing major superstars have you found that there's a market for people that want to get to know artists before anybody else gets to know them oh definitely in fact uh it, you know the, the proof is in the pudding there is a, a radio station that's internet based it's in new york city called uh trs 24 7 okay and they are having amazing success in playing music from unsigned artists and they play all genres uh, you submit your music to them. They are going to do a little bit of checking up on you to find out how serious you are. Now, what when uh, you say serious, what are they looking for? Well, I mean, they're looking for you know they're looking for proof that somebody is actually trying to make a legitimate career out of music. Uh, they they want a good sounding recording from you. They don't want something that sounds like it was made in your bedroom on your Mac. Uh, they want. They now, now hold, your, now, hold on one second. What do you mean by that? Because I have songs being played right now that were recorded in someone's bedroom on their Mac that we just made a thousand dollars in twenty four hours on. So, what is it you're referring to? They they want to make sure that it's produced well, that you have a high bit rate, that it sounds good when they're playing it on okay. their station. Quality yes, recording. Quality. Okay. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They want high quality. You know, they're looking to see if you have a website because they want to be able to talk about you. They have to have right. information about you right. to talk okay. about you instead of just playing their song. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I've had opportunities to kind of do some things with them. I think we're going to start doing regular radio appearances with them, which I'm really excited Wonderful. about. Wonderful. Uh, because their show is actually being shown on cable television in New York City, and now they're in talks of having it shown in Chicago as well. So they're having success with it. Uh, I know Melody Beals, who runs FlipCamWebisodes.com. Uh, that's a website that I helped her start early last year. And she's having an unbelievable amount of people contacting her uh, for interviews, trying to get their music tweeted out, trying to get their videos seen, trying to get things heard. So, you know, websites like Melody's, Internet radio stations like what they have going on at TRS 24-7, and then what we're doing with Rocket – uh, we're quickly starting to see more and more people coming through wanting information on different services and everybody wants exposure. I mean, that's sure. really what it's coming down right now. Now, do those radio stations charge for exposure or are they just a outlet? Uh, to my knowledge, TRS does not charge. Okay. That they're an outlet for people to send their music to. In fact, if you go to Rocket's webpage on the homepage. Yeah, I'm going to give everyone all your contact information here. Yeah, so. there's a link on there that you can actually get a hold of them and submit your music. And, and I don't mind 
paying for things if I know that that person really has an audience. You know, a lot of times internet radio stations like to fudge their numbers. They don't know how to read their own data and claim to be bigger than what they are. But someone like me who can go in and read their data and go, no, it's not 1.6 million. It's actually 1,600. You know, it's like a lot of them, uh, they're, what, what they have the ability to reach and what they're actually reaching at any given time could be different. But if, if they're showing success, yeah, I'm all about that. Tell me a little bit more about the flip cam gal. Uh, Melody is in Austin, Texas. Okay. And she was looking to start up a website when her and I started talking. I was in February of last year. And she had this idea. And she didn't know if it was going to work. She didn't have any experience with building websites or anything like that. And we had become good friends. And I started encouraging her. I said, look, give it a try. Go on something like Wix. It's not hard to build a website on Wix. It's very easy. And take her around with the tools, kind of get an idea how to do it. And I said, you know, take it from there. So she did and came up with a general concept for what she wanted to do for the website. And from there, she started going on Twitter, using social media, saying, hey, look, I'm looking for artists that want to submit their music. Uh, she went out and started interviewing people. And what was really cool was she didn't do much to uh, edit the interview. She took uh, literally a flip cam, which is where the website sure. came from, uh, had somebody hold it, and she would do the interview. And it was raw. It was uncut. You know, she was a little bit worried about how she was going to come across at first because she never interviewed anybody. She didn't have that kind of experience and background. And I told her, I said, look, you have to start one way. That's Just right. Go do That's it. right. Just go do it. So she went and did it. And if I remember correctly, it was with Tom Meany, uh, who is an artist in Austin. And he had just had a new CD that came out, met up with him someplace, did the interview. It went well. People liked it. Uh, then she scheduled another one and another one, and eventually she was driving from Austin to Dallas to interview a singer, uh, and things really, really picked up for her, and now she's actually doing, uh, I think once or twice a week, she's doing a radio segment with, oh, an good. Internet radio, with an internet radio station based in Europe, and she records it, it's a couple minutes long, it's basically her thoughts on different things in music. Okay. So it's going really well for her. I'm really happy for her, really proud of her. Now, so you're not a publicist, you're a writer, but you have the ability to write press releases. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because, you know, I tell people, for 18 years, I was the guy who would wake up every morning, open up my email at the radio station, and I would have to start going through press releases, people sending me things, hey, do a story about this, hey, will you cover this? And it just got to the point where every morning scanning through these emails, everybody trying to do the same thing to get your attention, uh, sending you something in the subject line that had in big capital letters, press release, media coverage requested, uh, things like that. And it got really, really tiresome. Um, it, you know, then you had people who would send you something and say, hey, you know, we're going to have this going on. They would bribe you. They would bribe you. They would say, hey, we're going to have food. This is going on. And, and then you would go, and of course, you would see a lot of media there because they knew that they were going to get fed. Uh, and it seems like a simple thing, but it's true. It, it works. Um, it, we would have people mailing us things, and I, I think it was Stern, Stern Relations, I think was the name of the public relations company that was doing stuff for McDonald's oh, wow. for a while. And, and what they would do was they would mail us these boxes, and you know the box would be – I don't know, like that big, that big, and then you would open it up. It would be really light. You would open it up, and there would literally be a, a cookie, a, a pre-wrapped cookie with the press release, and that's all that was in this big box. But they got you to open the box because you were wondering what was in it. Or not, because you couldn't feel it, so the curiosity took yeah, over. exactly. So, you know, that was one of the things that when we started to develop Rocket, it was like, okay, what can we do to help singers? And initially, Rocket to the Stars started as a larger-than-normal singing competition in Newcastle, PA. And that was what, what the original idea was, and it kind of evolved from there. And when I say bigger than normal, our finals the past couple of years have had crowds of about 27,000 people. Wow. Uh, the finals have been broadcast on a 50,000-watt radio station. It's a three-hour show with commercial breaks because of the radio broadcast. I would write that show, I would direct it, and I would host it. And we would have Comcast come in, and they would set up an internet signal going to the backstage area. 
We would use that to stream the audio back to the radio station. We would also use that to access text voting results because we had a system that was set up where the crowd made up 50% of the votes. Whether they were there live or whether they were listening okay. to the radio, they could text in the votes. We had judges who made up the other 50%. And what we would do is we would use that inter internet connection to access the text results in real time backstage. So the show would start at 7 o'clock. We would take six people into that final show, and about two hours into it, those six would get cut down to two. And then we would start the text voting over again, have those two perform once more, and then use the next vote to determine the winner. It was an amazing show. Uh, Newcastle's the fireworks capital of America. Okay. As surprising as it is for as small as it is, we actually have the headquarters of two of the largest fireworks companies in the world. Interesting. Uh, Zamb Zambelli and Pyrotechnico. So at 10 o'clock at the fireworks festival, when the fireworks would start to shoot off about 100 yards behind our stage, we timed the show up so that we announced the winner right when the fireworks started. And it was just an awesome experience for everybody that was involved. So that's how Rocket started. But then, you know, we wanted to do more with it. We wanted to do something different. And that's when we started to bring a lot of the arts development stuff in. And that's when I started talking to the contestants about things dealing with the media. We would bring them into the radio station and do mock radio interviews. Uh, we would talk to them about putting together websites. And, and we got to a point where last year, if you made it through the auditions, between the last audition and the first elimination show, every singer that was in it at that point had to build their own website and get set up with MailChimp or one other service so that they would start putting together an email list. And sure. the idea was, if you made it through the auditions, even if you got cut in the first show after the auditions, if anything, you walked away with your own website and the start of an email list that you didn't have when you came in. Great. Absolutely fantastic. It was. It was. And, and people learned a lot. They found out that they could build their own website. Well, and if they, if, if American Idol would only do this for these contestants, they would be able to take advantage of their most try to capture after they leave, not they before do. they leave. So I love that idea. It's what I preach. I love that. Yeah, it, it, it was it was really well received. Uh, when we started to put the development aspect into it, we actually had a drop in the number of people auditioning. And I know why. It was because they knew coming in how much work was involved. And it scared a lot of people away. So that's why we don't have a lot of superstars, which you've heard me say. Because there's a different work ethic and mentality. Every step that you want to be higher in this business, there's a different level of commitment. There's a different level of cost. There's a different level of work ethic. There's a little different... There's a different level of everything, and you're right. Most people aren't willing to do it, which is awesome because it clears the way for those that do. It does. It does. So, you know, we've had good success with it. We had one contestant a couple of years ago that had a video that went viral. Uh, she had about, about a half a million views on a video that she did. Ended up being interviewed on television stations. Wow. Uh, she, at the time, and I'm probably going to do one of my artist interviews with her. At the time, she wasn't prepared for the attention that she was getting. And Why? We had to, Why? Because at that point, we hadn't started doing the requirement with a website. And even though we had told her over and over and over that she needed to have a website, she hadn't done it. Okay. And uh, our producer at the time, James Meany, who was also our voice instructor, uh, he said to her one day, he said, you know, he said, I'm not seeing videos of you on YouTube. He said, if I went to look you up, I would never know you were a singer because you're not putting stuff out there. So he told her, he said, why don't you put together some, a video, anything, you singing at home, something to get it up on YouTube. She did. Uh, what happened was she did a cover of the cup song from the movie Pitch Perfect. Right. And Kirsten, when she was born, she had a birth defect. And yeah. her right arm from the elbow down, she's missing it. So she does the video of the cup song with a Tupperware container at her mother's dining room table. And she, you know, beat out everything. Voice sounds good. Posts the video. Within a week, she has 100,000 views. And is it because of her handicap, do you think? I think that was part of it. Good. I mean, she okay. has a good voice. I don't want to say good that she's handicapped, but she took advantage of a situation, and right. that's what makes makes things go viral. It's unique. 
it was inspiring. Yeah. It was inspiring to a lot of people that, that she had that level of talent and that she was doing what she was doing despite only being able to do it with one hand. Wow. So that happened on a Wednesday. The video went viral. Saturday morning, I was talking to her and I asked her, I said, Kirsten, why don't, where's your website? You're missing out on a huge opportunity. And uh, that day I came home and I locked myself in my bedroom basically and I built her a website and I didn't come out until the website was done. And we booked her on two television stations. They took camera crews to her house and did interviews with her. Then I booked her for a full hour on the biggest talk radio station in Pittsburgh, KDKA, which was the very first radio station in the world. Wow. And that was a really cool experience for her. So she she's had some good things happen because of the video since then. But I asked her one day, I said, for as many times as I've told you to get together a website, to have an email list ready and all this stuff, why didn't you do it? And she, she admitted, she, she kind of, her head went down a little bit and she said, you know what? She said, all those times you talked about that, a lot of that stuff was going in one ear and out the other. That's right. Because she was more concerned about being on stage and performing. Right. And that's why I tell people, it's not being in the right place at the right time. It's being the right person in the right place at the right time. That way you're able to capitalize on those opportunities. And that's all I promise in the blueprint is that you will be prepared. That's why the first things I teach is branding. Artists, you get your website. The, I said the second most important thing to your music is your website. The third is your email list. It's not Twitter. It's not you got to have those things put in place before you get big on social media because the ultimate goal is to get them to the email list. So let me have you do this for me. Tell me, a lot of people have been asking me questions lately about a bio, and it's really hard sometimes to write about yourself. I, I prefer because, I, honestly, I prefer video in the about me. I think right now it's proof that more people will, but some people have to have a written bio. What do people, what's the best thing that they could put in a two-paragraph bio, and what are some things that, you see missing you know what don't you I hate up and coming rising star I hate all this great accolades and then I go look at their social media and see that they've got 50 freaking followers I right. what what suggestions and tips can you give them in that capacity as far as writing their own bios from a writing perspective first of all stay away from the cliches because it looks so cheap, and it looks like it was something... I'm taking notes started. myself, so hold on. If I yeah, turn away, that's what I'm doing. That's all right. St stay away from the cliches. And, and a lot of people do it, and they do it because they're not quite sure what to say. I've told people in the past, as hard as it may be to believe, and some of your singers might not agree with this, but it's the truth. In my experience, so, uh, songwriters are some of the worst people to have writing something like a bio on a website. Okay. They get too wordy. They get overly descriptive. Uh, I understand. Sometimes, too, I tell people it's usually a good idea to have somebody else write your bio because when you have an emotional investment in it uh, and you start wanting to talk about all the things that you've done, you start to drag the entire thing down. And it should be short, and it should be efficient. And when I say efficient, again, stay away from being overly descriptive. It should be more technical, basically saying, this is what I've done, this is where I'm going. And I know a lot of people, I, I see it on their bios. They start putting all the different awards that they've won. They were in this singing competition. They were in that singing competition. Ultimately, that bio is not an opportunity for you to give people a laundry list of all the things that you've done. Okay. So, so what did I, you see? You said there where they've been and where, where they've been and where they're going. Where they, yeah, where they've been, where they're going, but keep it short because the bios, believe it or not, you know, fans go to a website and they start clicking around. They're going to listen to your music and they do want to learn a lot about you, but the bio page, specifically that little three paragraph bio that you put on there, make it short because Unless you have an amazing story to tell, and I mean super amazing, they're going to lose interest very quickly, and they're going to go to something else on the website. And if that ends up being the case, what's the point of having that gigantic biography on there? There's no right. point whatsoever. The other thing that I see a lot of people do is they repeat stuff in the bio that is already said in other places on the website. Okay. And 
again, that's coming down to efficiency. Okay. Don't sit there and repeat a bunch of things because then it starts feeling like you're trying to fill up the content and you don't have a whole lot to say about yourself. Okay. So if you do have some kind of an award or something that you did that you're really, really proud of, and let's say, for instance, you put it on your homepage and it's part of a banner or, you know, publicizing something, whatever the case may be, there's no reason for you to put it in that little bio that's in the back of the website. Now, mind you, that's different from what you're doing with a press release and, and what you're doing with your media kit. Those are two entirely different things because when you send a media kit out to somebody, you're doing it assuming that they have not read some of the stuff on your website. Okay, so media kit, different. All I want to focus on now, we're going to cover two different things. All I want to focus on now is their, their website about section, their Twitter, because you don't get a whole bunch of space there, so what's no. important, and then uh, the Facebook info section, because I see people really screwing that one up. Two, and then I have an idea that I would like to run by you, and from a journalistic standpoint and also a music lover standpoint, want to get your feedback there. So cover just – and I think you have. It's like just – I always tell people I, I like that. Where you been? Where are you going? Should they put some similarities in there like we do with the elevator pitch? You know, kind of in the style of to kind of – okay. Yeah, yeah, I would put some of that stuff on there. What I would do, when you're sitting down to write your bio, uh, look at the rest of the writing that is on the website and keep it congruent. Okay, I don't have a lot of writing on the websites that I build for people. Okay. All we have is if you see the ones we've done, here's what I've learned and this is what I've studied. In the old days, before we had social media, you had to have a $5,000, $10,000 website because that's the only place people went. So you had to have a forum. And you had to have a chat room and you had to have a video page and you had to have all these different things. So you don't have to have that now because people go to YouTube to watch videos. They're going to go chat with you and forum with you on Facebook. They get to like you on Twitter. So the websites that I'm having built right now are one page and everything's mostly right there. It's like here's the widget for Twitter. Here's the widget for Facebook. Here's the widget for Instagram. Here's a gallery of pictures. Up top, it has a link to my Twitter, my Facebook, my YouTube, my socials, a music player with music, and a quick little about section and a contact form. That's it. Okay, well, then that makes it easier because it gives you a lot more information that you can work with because then you're not They're not yourself. going to repeat it. Yeah, it's going to be right there. But I also like it a couple paragraphs because people are lazy. They watch more videos than they read books. They do. They, they do. And that's why I tell people – Make sure that that bio is not boring because right. you know, people have And that's why I'm interviewing you right now because most of the ones I read are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when people have that, that attention span of a flea, it, it, it definitely makes writing this in a way that is efficient a lot more important. So what you guys can do is since you aren't going to be repeating any information, I would say shoot for no more than three short paragraphs. Okay. Keep it short. Don't get overly descriptive. And when I say that, you know, people kind of start to get like that flowery language when they're songwriting and they start to try to use a lot of similes and, and things like that. Don't do that. Keep it basic. Write as if you were trying to get a point across to a fourth grader. Okay. And, and that's what newspapers do. That's the, the other saying with newspapers. Try to write on a fourth or a fifth grade level because it's easy to read. You can read it quickly. And more importantly, you have a greater tendency to remember the information. And that's what you want. You want people to remember what they're reading. Right. And ultimately what I tell folks too is the whole point of any dis, uh, we got we we got we're wanting to get them to your so to your email list anyway. Mm -hmm. So don't show them how irrelevant you are and how you just talk about yourself. And, you know, even though that's what a bio does, I kind of like, uh, I kind of like first person bios that just kind of nowadays, because everything is so personal and engaging. So what's some tricks to first person bios that you would give? Let's say you're writing one about you. I don't want you to, if, if you were writing one about yourself, what would it sound like? If I was writing one about myself, one, I would have to think about who my audience is. Okay. Because Jim, hold on. Great point. That's what we teach them. Who's your yeah. audience? Okay. There, there, 
there are people who would want to know about me personally, would want to know about my background. They would want to know, hey, you know, this is a guy who's a single dad full time, which I am. I have a seven year old daughter. Uh, some people find that interesting. There are other people that really don't care about that. They want to know, you know, what have you done in radio because they find that interesting. So if you're writing something for an artist's website, if you're writing that for yourself and you're doing a first person narrative, the first thing that you have to do. Okay, is right now I'm anointing you rock star. So you're, you're writing as you're a rock star. Okay, so writing I'm a rock star. Okay, I'm talking about the venues that I played. I'm talking about people that I've opened for. Okay, I'm talking about places that I've sold out. Okay, and this is what you have to keep in mind. There is a different standard for impressing people based upon where you live when you start talking about music. Okay, I like that. So. For your singers, your Blueprint members that are from Nashville, putting something into their biography saying that they sang at the Hard Rock Cafe in Nashville, nah, Not really uh, going to impress anybody. It's not really going to impress anybody. But, but, I did a show that I helped with about two years ago, and there were seven girls in that show. And all seven girls lived between Pittsburgh and Erie. None of them lived in the city of Pittsburgh. Did a show at the Hard Rock Cafe at Station Square. I was able to get six of the seven in their lo local newspapers, one of them on the front page, and one of them a radio interview with her local radio station because they were all from smaller towns. And when they said, hey, I'm performing at the Hard Rock Cafe in Pittsburgh, it was way more impressive to their local newspapers because right. of where they were. Right. And, and a lot of people don't think about that. So, <coughs> so, but that's for a press release. That's not for a bio right, right, on the website. Bio. Right. But, but those are things you have to take into consideration. You have to think about what impresses people that are coming to your website that are reading about you. Right. You have to kind of keep people's minds. So, so for, for me, and then it would be, if you're talking about places you played, you might want to say, you know, did 150 shows last year, had the chance to open up for Brad Paisley. And, um, you know, we, my band rock, you know, or something like that. You would incorporate that into there then. Right. You, okay. you, know, you look at somebody like Holly and Stewart and they're booking themselves for what, 150, 200 shows a year. Yeah. I, I think is what they told me. That's impressive. Right. That needs to be in a bio. Right. That they're doing that many shows talking about the numbers of states they've been in. When you can start quantifying things. Right. That gives people perspective. When you tell people, I did shows last year in 35 states, you know, somebody looks at that and says, that person's serious. Right. That's somebody that I can invest my time in and know that they're going to go someplace. So when you can quantify things, when you can talk about how many people you've been in front of, when you can talk about how many states you've been to performing, when you can specifically name names that people are going to recognize that you open for, when you can name venues that people recognize. Uh, we had a singer that came through a Rockets competition two years ago, and it was really cool because last fall she was at Heinz Field, and Kelly Pickler, she met Kelly Pickler before the show started. They right. Had a meet and, greet. and Dawn went on Facebook and said, hey, I'm going to get to go in for the meet and greet. And I immediately jumped on, and I'm like, sing for her, sing for her, something, because Dawn had a similar voice. So Dawn goes into the meet and greet, sings for her. Kelly loves it. Middle of the show, Kelly calls her up on stage to do a song with her. There you go. I told Dawn, Dawn, get that on your bio. Let people know about that. And not just that you got to sing with Kelly Pickler. Say Heinz Field. Get that name out because people recognize that. That's sure. a football stadium. That's right. You know, so when you can do that, it makes your biography far more impressive than talking about some singing competition you won when you were 16. Okay, awesome. Those are all fantastic points. Now, let's go... Quickly to the Facebook bio. Similar information. Uh, the nice thing about having the Facebook bio is linking it back to your website. Okay. And that's, you know, we talk about that. That's yes. ultimately what we want to do. Yep. The information for the most part is going to be the same. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of people, as sad as it is to say, a lot of people when they look you up on Facebook, I personally have not found, have a tendency to go and read about you in that little right. paragraph on right. the Facebook page. But you have to be ready in case they do. Well, and a thing that I try to tell people, too, is don't cut and paste your video, your bio from your website to that Facebook box. The reason being is because 
that top part needs to drive people to your website. So if it's just talking about you and like Wade just said, if they don't go and click the about and it opens up more, you never gave them a call to action to go to your website. So that's why I always put get exclusive access to seven free songs or whatever you put in your thing. And then I start a little bit about the bio, but I always give them that call to action first. Most people just cut and paste and never tell me where to go, like you said, to build further relationships. Let's talk Twitter real quick, which you just Twitter. get 160 characters. Yeah, boy, Twitter Twitter is a tough place. Uh, don't do full sentences. Just give keywords that you can kind of get your message across. You know, mention that you sing. I tell people, go ahead and put your genre in there. That way, you know, if somebody comes to it, they know kind of what you're about. Uh, and then if you can hashtag a couple of things in there as well. Uh Put your website in there. Be sure to yeah, put your website you have in to, there. Right. I see a lot of people that do not include their website on that. Yeah, I see a lot of people putting a, a, a stupid YouTube link that is mm -hmm. just numbers and generic. And then once again, you're sending them to another place where you can never thank them for right. anything. So, okay, good. And, and another thing, too, is if you can, if you can free up enough characters to do it, Actually type out your website. Don't use a tiny URL. No, you have to use uh, H. Yeah, you want to make it linkable too. It gives you a yeah. chance. It gives you a place in Twitter now where you can not only write it once, but you can actually put the website in there. So yeah, definitely don't do the tiny URL because you're trying to brand your website location. Right. You want them to see the name. And I know I've even gone to the extent on Twitter that if I have enough characters to put it into any tweet or any responses, I type out the website's name. I put right. in www.rockettothestars.com. That way it's there. People see it. The name's still coming up. You never know when somebody's going to see whatever it is that you tweeted out, see the link in the message, see the name, and go, I wonder what that is, and then click on it. Awesome. Okay, so how can people get a hold of you? Uh, I'm going to tell that, but tell them the services. You know what? Forget how they get a hold of you. I'm going to make sure those links are available. I'm going to make sure your email is available. I'm going to make sure they have everything. What is the service that you offer to young artists? I read a little bit about it, and then you said, call here for a consultation right. or whatever. Right. What, we don't need consultations. Yeah, what's the, give me a ballpark figure of what price it will cost and what you would be giving them, and then we can have them call you for the consultation. But I don't want to hide the price. That's right. What we do is we schedule things in blocks. We can do a 25-minute block or we can do a 50-minute block. Uh, the 25-minute block is $40. The 50-minute block is $75. And what we do, I, I always make it a point to tell people this. We don't manage, we educate. I'm awesome. I'm not, here, not great. here to build your website for you. I'm here to help you put it together so that you can do it on your own down the road. Okay. And, you know, if that requires us every once in a while sitting down, maybe once or twice a month, just for maintenance purposes, looking over the website, making sure your links are the way they should be, not just the technical stuff of making the website look a certain way, but also designing the website so that it's good for marketing purposes. Yeah, I've got all that. I don't need right. website services from uh, you. I need bios. I need we do, words. We do the bios. Okay. We do writing for biographies for your websites. We do writing for press kits, helping you put together the press kits. Wonderful. Uh, we do, oh my gosh, there's so much. We do live performance training. Uh, we help prepare you for interviews. If there's any article that's on there right now, other than the email article that I did with you, I tell people, go read the one about preparing for radio interviews. Because 18 years of seeing people come in, not just singers, politicians, sure. elected officials, uh, community leaders, whatever the case may be, coming in and sitting down and being clueless about getting ready for a radio interview, it was extremely frustrating. So I wrote that article actually after I was on a drive home and I heard a University of Pittsburgh football player being interviewed and the interview had me two minutes in, I turned it off right. because I couldn't handle it anymore. I came home from that drive and wrote that article. Uh, it, it talks a lot about thinking about things that you can say, having stories in your back pocket in right. case the interview is not going well. Yeah. You have things we, we, we cover a lot of that in the blueprint. I just want to know if I need to get a bio written from you. I, yeah, what's a, what's a rough estimate of what it's going to cost me? Uh, for a little three-paragraph bio for the website, you're probably looking at about $50. Okay. So, and, and what I do is I have the artist send me all the relevant wonderful. information that they can think to send me. I'll go over it, and I'll start to craft it and put it together. And I tell okay. people all the time, more than likely 95% of the stuff you send me isn't going to be in the bio. 
Uh, and they should understand that you did them a favor yes. <laughs> by doing yeah. it that way. But you need all that information so that yeah, you can craft it. Craft. Yep. Yeah, so that we can craft it. Okay. So we do that. Uh, the media kits, those are, are going to take a little bit longer sure. because we write a lot more uh, about the artist, what they're doing, things that they've done in the past. Just give me a ballpark because a lot of people's are going to be different. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is basically show them, first off, they just need to go to your website anyway and subscribe because I love your stuff and it will give them some great content like you were yeah, mentioning well. and so, some advice. Uh, I'm just trying to give an idea of what a good press kit's going to cost them. Is it 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks? What is probably it? probably about two 250, okay. depending on the artist. I would say ballpark is in that area. Okay, uh, and is that those, digital and fit that stuff that they can have physical, use it to digital, make and to both? Okay, wonderful. It's digitally and physical, and what we do for that is we're going to have to have you send a lot of information. Sure, but we're going to do an interview very similar to. We do with the artist interviews that you saw for the springs sure uh, for two steel girls because i need a lot of background information and that's all part of the 200 250 bucks that's all included right. okay yeah and you know, we're gonna have to have photos uh things like that so okay. links obviously to all the prevalent websites awesome well man this was awesome and i think it's really gonna enlighten some folks i think it's gonna drive a lot of attention your way uh i think you're gonna get you know, I, I love the fact that I've had you popping around the blueprint, checking on people and things like that. How did you find me? Uh, Tom Jackson. Okay. You were on Tom Tom's Jackson. list. Yeah, it was about, yeah, I met Tom back in uh, September because I came down for one of his boot camps. Okay. And uh, I've been going back and forth to his camp a couple of months even before that. But he had sent a thing out around Christmas and it was when you did the three links uh, I think they were about 10 or 15 minutes each, the videos. Yeah, what ha here's minutes. what happened is I was looking to get a fresh group of people before I launched the final year-end sale of the Blueprint. And I gave both Brett Manning and Tom Jackson, I said, hey, why don't you just offer this free video series to your fans? And it turned, I was able to generate tw almost 2,500 new new leads from just giving something right. away. People always say, oh, you shouldn't give anything away. I just got 2,500 leads by giving something away that's recorded that I only had to do one time. So good. I'm glad right. that worked. Yeah, it did. And, you know, I got that from Tom. And I know I watched the first video the first day that I got the email from Tom. Uh, and I was real busy for like the next two days. And then I went back and I watched the rest of them. So that's how I found out about it. Okay, him. good. All right. Well, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know it's going to benefit a lot of people and help a lot of people. And I look forward to seeing you jumping around the uh, Facebook group there. And if there's anything else we can do for you, please let us All know. All right. Thank you. Thank you.